Hi, welcome to the first part of the Wiremock tutorials. I am Razvan and I am super excited to take you through this journey. In this video I will be showing you one of the easiest ways to create mocked API endpoints using Wiremock. We will talk about what is Wiremock, how to run it as a standalone HTTP server, how to create a simple API endpoint using JSON files and how to test it using Postman. If you are new here, make sure you click that subscribe button. Let's jump directly into Wiremock official documentation. Wiremock is at its core a web server that serves responses to particular requests. It can be used as a library by any JVM application or run as a standalone process either on the same host as the system under test or a remote server. All its features are accessible via its REST interface and its Java API. Let's get started. Wiremock can be used inside Java application as a Maven or Gradle dependency. In this tutorial, we will be using it as a standalone process. Before we start, make sure that you have Java installed on your local machine. One way to check that is to open the terminal and type java hyphen version. And it should return you uh, information regarding the Java version that you have installed on your machine. The next action is to download the standalone jar file from this page. It will be used to start the HTTP server. Scroll a bit. Find this running standalone section and click download the standalone jar from here. Save the file. We will be using this file to start the HTTP server from the command line interface. We can see the command that starts the server if we go in the left side menu and click running as a standalone process. This is the command and additionally we can add some other options like hyphen hyphen port to set a specific port that will be used by the server um, hyphen hyphen verbose to get all the logs directly into the terminal and so on. The next step is to start the server. Open a terminal and go to the folder where the file was downloaded. For example purpose, create a new directory and move the file into it. Use the command to run the server java-jar-wiremock and add the port, let's say 8080 and uh, verbose. We can see that the server is up and running on 8080. To stop the server we press uh, the Ctrl C keys. When you run the server for the first time you will notice that it automatically creates two folders in the current path. Both folders will store JSON files. The mapping folder will be used to store the API requests and the underline underline files folder will be used to store the API responses that will be served by the server. Let's get started by creating a simple get endpoint that returns a list of users. Go into the mappings folder, create a new file, open the file with any uh, text editor. Mm 
this JSON will contain a request in which we need to specify the method and the URL. We also need to include the response which for now will contain only the um, status code and the path that will point to the response of this endpoint as we agree that it will be stored in the files folder so we just need to provide the path The next step is to create this file into the files folder. Don't forget to save the, the get users file. It's time to create the response. Don't forget that it has to contain the same name that we put into the get users JSON. Let's double check its name. So it has to be get users response.json. Use the text editor to open the new file. And let's create uh, payload with uh, two JSON objects. Save the file. And our endpoint is ready. We just need to run the server and uh, check the endpoints uh, via Postman. Let's go into the jar files location and start the server. Java hyphen jar wiremook hyphen hyphen port. 8080 verbose the server is up and running we just need to open postman set the get as a, as a request http localhost 8080 users API users send and we got the response in the terminal because we set the verbose we are seeing all the logs that we need for debugging purpose please keep in mind that while the server is up and you decide to make some changes on the JSON files for example you change the status code or you want to add or modify some headers you will have to restart the server in order to see all these changes applied let me demonstrate you this scenario with an example in our existing um, api endpoint we are receiving uh, 200 as the status code the server is still up and running let's change the status code
you want 201 save the file send the request and our change is not visible because we need to stop the server and restart it send the request again and we have the new status code the last thing that I want to show you in this tutorial is what happens if you are trying to send a request but the server is not running stop the server try to send the request and you will receive could not get any response because there was a connection error